My dear students, this is uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is uh, our first lecture in the second course. We are still dealing with uh, better English pronunciation. Uh, this chapter is uh, still talking about the consonants of English. If you remember in the previous lecture, uh, we talked about uh, fricative sounds. Uh, we are dealing and describing consonants based on uh, their manner of articulation. I mean, how uh, are they produced? Uh, so we started with fricative sounds. Uh, those sounds um, require partial contact between two articulators and making a narrow opening for the airflow to go out with friction. Now it's time to talk about stops or stop consonants if you like. So as I said a minute ago in fricative sounds two articulators come in partial contact but the air still can find its way out of the mouth. While in stop consonants uh, we need to have a complete closure not a partial one. And when we say closure, we mean contact. So we need a complete contact between two articulators so the air is completely stopped for a short time. And this may be the reason why these sounds are called stops. Why? Because in the pronunciation of these sounds, the airflow is stopped completely for a short time. Okay? After the complete closure or the complete contact, what will happen? We will, ha we will have the release phase. So in the pronunciation of stop consonants, we need to have two stages. The first stage is called the closure stage. And the second one is the release stage. During the closure state, the, the two articulators are in complete contact and in the release stage or the release phase if you like this one the two articulators leave each other get away from each other and uh, we have some kind of slight explosion slight plosion so the air is going to burst out يعني يخرج بقوة نوعا ما ينفجر انفجار مو بالمعنى الحرفي بالمعنى المجازي. So since the air is stopped completely for a short time, أصبح مضغوط محجوز. So when the two articulators leave each other, get away from each other, the air will be pushed out with a kind of explosion. Okay, that's why. These sounds are sometimes called plosive sounds. Then they are called stops because the air is stopped due to the complete closure we have. We call them plosives because when the two articulators are away from each other, the air is pushed out strongly. Okay? For example, the sound P, I'm going to pronounce it a little bit slowly so that you can identify the two stages we have now so uh, when the lips are pressed together this is the closure stage when the lips are open the air will be released with an explosion and this is called the release stage okay the complete closure takes place at different places so we have pairs of stop phonemes based on the two articulators taking part in the pronunciation of these sounds. Uh, if you remember, we talked about uh, when we talked about uh, fricative sounds, we say that the friction and the narrow opening is made at different places. Again, when we talk about stop sounds, we have the closure, I mean the contact, at different places okay so again we have pairs of words if you remember with fricatives 
we have feather, we have feather, we have seze, we have she and je. Again, we have here pairs of stop sounds based on the place where the closure is, is happening. Okay, let's talk about the pronunciation of stop sounds in general so that we don't need to repeat the same information each time we go to another pair of, of, of stop sounds. So, in the pronunciation of stop sounds in general, whether per, ber, ter, de, ke, ge, no problem, we have the same points. The first one is the oral cavity is closed. The oral cavity or the mouth cavity is closed by the two articulators which are in complete contact. At the same time, the soft palate is raised. The soft palate is raised. And you know, when the soft palate is raised, the nasal cavity is also closed. So in this case, what do we have? Both cavities are closed. The oral cavity is closed by the, the contact, the closure we have between the two articulators. The nasal cavity is also closed by the uh, the the, the uh, by the soft palate, which which takes a, a raised position, blocking the air from uh, getting through the nasal cavity. So, in this case, the air flow will be stopped completely. It cannot go neither through the mouth nor through the nose. Okay. So the both cavities are closed. The air cannot go out neither through the mouth nor through the nose. The air is trapped. Trapped. Okay. Now, when the two articulators get away from each other, leave each other, the air bursts out with a slight explosion. This is happening each time we have a stop sound. When the two articulators are closed, and the soft palate is, is, is raised, both cavities are closed, the air is trapped. When the two articulators, this is number two, leave each other, the air will be pushed out with a slight explosion. Now, number three, I want you to pay attention here. Uh, while the two articulators are still in complete contact with each other, the speech organs take the position of the coming sound. While the contact is being made, the next sound is being prepared. So, when the two articulators, as we said, are in complete contact with each other, and they are still in contact with each other, the, the speech organs will prepare themselves to pronounce the, the coming sound, the sound that come, the sound the sound that comes after the 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 stop sound. Okay, so we prepare our speech organs for the second sound while we are still having the complete contact. It's not a step after step. The the two steps go, coexist. Yeah, it is zaman at certain point. Okay, So this is what we mean by being prepared and being made. The being made is for the complete closure and being prepared is that the speech organs prepare themselves to the, uh, to the, uh, to the coming sound. For example, if we have the word um, to, to, now we have the sound t, which is a stop sound. In the pronunciation of t, the tip of the tongue is in contact with the alveolar ridge. Okay, this is how to pronounce the sound t. We are going to have a complete contact between the tip of the tongue and the alveolar ridge. While we are still having this contact, we will prepare ourselves for the u. And one of these preparations is to round the lips, for example. Because you know, two is is a rounded vowel. Okay. So this is what we mean by uh, uh, preparing uh, the, the the speech organs for the second sound. It is different from, for example, from uh, 
from saying tight we have the same sound stop sound we have the same closure but we don't have the same preparation because here we, we don't have ooh we don't need to 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 round our lips for example it is tight 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 we prepare our tongue to be uh, a little bit lowered in order to pronounce the the i i okay so the preparation uh, is different each time now this is the first pair of stop sounds p and b p and b in the pronunciation of these sounds the contact is made between the two lips this is very clear you can put a mirror in front of you and say p, p. you are going to see clearly that the, the two lips are in complete contact and when the two lips are in complete contact the air will be uh, blocked for some time stopped trapped if you like and when the lips are open the air bursts out with a slight explosion this is how to pronounce the sound p and b okay you may go to figure 16 and see how the lips are pressed together this is in, this is in your book now p and b are thus bilabial what do you mean by bilabial bilabial consonants are the consonants produced with the two lips when the two lips are in contact with each other they are stops of course because the air is stopped uh, but the difference between them is that p is voiceless while b is voiced p is voiceless while b is voiced you can try by putting your your fingers on the side of your neck and say p, p, p. there is no vibration in the vocal cords no vibration it means that p is voiceless and strong and you can try with b, 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 b. there is vibration it means that the vocal cords vibrate the consonant sound b is voiced and it is weak this is weak because it is voiced while this one is strong because it is voiceless so p is also different from b in aspiration before we go to aspiration let me uh, repeat again p and b are both bilabial they are produced by the lips they are both stops because the air is stopped for a short time but p is voiceless and b is voiced now p and b are different in aspiration so what is aspiration aspiration is to have a buff of air buff means nafkhat hawa a buff of air that accompanies the pronunciation of uh, stop sounds but not all of them only voiceless stop sounds and when they occur at the beginning of the syllable so how many conditions do we have in order to have aspiration three conditions only stop sounds can be aspirated voiceless sounds can be aspirated when they come at the beginning so the kind of sounds that can be aspirated are stop voiceless sounds when they are at the beginning of the syllable for example the sound or the word port p, p. you can notice the buff of air will after the the pronunciation of p p p port port the sound p is aspirated why because it is a stop this is the first condition and it is voiceless this is the second condition and as you can see it is where it is at the beginning it is at the beginning of the syllable so port the sound p is aspirated why it is a stop voiceless at the beginning what about this case sport sport now the sound p is not aspirated why because it is not at the beginning يعني عندنا شرط الستوب موجود شرط الفويسلس موجود لا يزال فويسلس لكن it's not at the beginning let's have the word bed the sound b is not aspirated 
هذا ما نسوي له buff of y it is a stop صحيح it is at the beginning but it is not voiceless b is voiced that's why it is not a spirit we say bed we don't say bed no no need to have this buff of air now what is the effect of aspiration on following sounds do we have any effect of aspiration yes of course whenever we have an aspirated sound at the beginning of of the uh, of the syllable the following sound will be what will be uh, devoiced so what do we mean by devoiced it means that the the sound will lose some of its voicing okay devoiced mean what do you mean by devoiced it means that the voice sound that comes after the aspirated sound will lose some of its voicing or sometimes we say the voicing will start at a later time this is what we mean by voice onset time يعني متى يبدا الفويسنج if we have a, an aspirated sound the voicing of the second sound will be delayed راح يتاخر شويه بعض السكولرز يسموه voicing loss يعني فقدان جزء من الفويسنج why because of the aspirated sound okay so for example when we have the aspirated sound for example uh, uh, in top this one is aspirated okay this t is aspirated the o which is originally a, a voiced sound will lose some of its voicing okay it's not the same voicing as in on okay in top the o will be devoiced that is to lose some of its voicing and the the beginning of voicing will a little bit be delayed okay now the distribution of sounds p and b uh, they can occur in all positions uh, pen speak lip bad tribe tap 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 not tap tab okay so they can occur in all positions initially medially finally and they are very frequent in english uh, if you remember when we talked about fricative sounds we said that the, the fricative sounds usually affect the preceding sound if the the, the, the fricative sound is strong the preceding sound will be weaker shorter if the uh, the the fricative sound is weak the preceding sound will be longer and stronger the same thing is applicable to pe and be to stop sounds so whenever we have pe in final position like in tap in tap the air is going to be shorter and weaker than usual because the pe is voiceless and strong while in tab which ends in be which is voiced weak the preceding vowel will be longer and shorter than usual okay i uh, leave this question for you to think about do we have p and b in arabic please give examples we're going to discuss this uh, question uh, inshallah when we meet uh, next lecture thank you very much for listening wish you the best of luck